Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today, we are going to be working on the gorgette neck weave tutorial. A gorgette is a French-made piece of armor that covers the bottom of the throat and the top part of the chest. As well you can imagine, this tutorial is going to be dealing with a weave in that particular area. Now, I must express extreme caution for this one, which goes in hand with anything near to the neck. For the most part, we're going to be locking off the areas closest to the neck so they do not cinch. So going double for today is safe, sane, and consensual. Safety, be sure to have some safety shears with you at all times. You can always get a new rope, can't get a new life. And consensual, me, Marie, and Crochet Roy are all consenting adults. Communication is key. Now, before we take a deep dive into this wonderful tutorial, let us first thank my sponsors, Knothead Nylon. Knothead Nylon is the destination for all your premium nylon rope bondage needs. Easy to clean, water resistant, up to 1,100 pounds of weight load, and in a wide array of beautiful, vibrant colors, Knothead Nylon will slake your rope desires. At checkout, put in discount code Rory10 for 10% off. I wanted to actually show you three variations of what's going on with this gorget weave. And this is a, a one rope variation. Now technically, I'm not actually going to show you this version. That will be a homework assignment for you in order to take the two rope alternating form and apply that knowledge to one rope. Now I was even barely able to get uh, <laughs> the one rope with three strands on Marie. Now this version and the two rope variation that's a lot like it has to have a block in the front, has to have a knot that makes sure it doesn't cinch because we do not have anything back here that prevents that. This right here is just slack rope. So when we come around here towards the front and we're putting the pressure the, towards the front, it's putting pressure on the back and then in, to stop it from squeezing on the side of the neck, we have to, because you can see that I can just pull out these very easily we have to have a knot here that will not cinch. So I have a modified double coin knot right here, which we will kind of get into when we start the other two rope variation. But it looks nifty. If you got one rope, simple, fun, I like it. Let's move over to two. So to start out, I'm gonna take the bites, the middle of my ropes, and I'm going to create a square knot. Creating a square knot with two bites of rope is super simplistic. Here's the best way to do it. You're gonna have the two bites, one of them's gonna hug the other, because they are good friends. Friends. The loopy that is currently going through the other loopy, you're gonna reach into that loopy and pull out the tail ends of the other rope. Once those tail ends are through, just pull taut. Easy, peasy, boo. I'll do it real quick with the opposite side. And now this one is going to hug the other, one loopy through the other, then you're gonna reach in, grab the tail ends of the other and pull through. Your turn. Once we have that square knot complete, what we're going to do is take it and put it in the middle of the back. Now, what we're gonna do from here on out is create this modified double coin knot. The double coin knot, let's do this. So, we're gonna take the left rope and we're going to create a circle, making sure that the tail goes behind the front end of the rope. We're gonna take the second one and apply that on top of it. What we're then gonna do is start weaving around and then through, around, and then through. The easiest way to remember and understand how to start this is to understand where to begin first. We will start by going under this. Aha, see what I did there? So we will take this rope and go under and then over, under and then over, and then we're gonna cross down diagonally this way. Since we went over, the next one must go under. So under, over, under. So we went under there, going over this one, and then under this one. And that gives us a double coin knot. One of the things you want to note with this double coin knot is that we're gonna leave these ends a little bit loose, a little bit open. That's because we're gonna go through them again at one point. So we're gonna take our lines and bring them just below the axillary space, just below the armpits, and we're gonna wrap around. Once you come around from the armpits, we're just going to cross over each other and just below the previous rope right here. We'll follow that around to the front. And at this point in time, we're going to follow identically the rope that is just below it. So this red one is going to follow this rose gold one. Because we can't really get underneath and crochet finger the rope through it, I like to get the end of the rope that makes it just a little bit easier. 
and weave that on through. Make sure I'm keeping them rope straight. Wonderful. This is the modified portion of the modified double coin knot. Is it a crazy modification? Nah. Is it slightly modified? Yeah. Ever so slightly. Alright, stop trying to hold on to the ropes, you ragamuffin. Don't you laugh at me. What a brat. It's important that these two first ones right here are not overly tight. Because these are the ones that still have a little bit of ability to uh, cut into a part of the neck. It won't most of the time. Because we've blocked off with this one right here, which is rather loose, this is the area that has the ability to begin uh, restricting blood flow. We've locked that off, so the ones that are going to be pushing up against it uh, really won't have the ability to get into it. They don't necessarily have the correct angles in order to push in and restrict that kind of blood flow. And honestly, you, you tighten them extremely tight, which I don't recommend. Please don't do that. So, when it comes to weaving, what goes under must go over. So saith the Rory. So this one went underneath. That means it has to go above on its next one. This one went over, so it's going below on its next one. So easy, so fun. We're gonna follow our neighbor rope. We're gonna go underneath and wrap back around. Now we are going to wrap around and you will notice that looks like we're gonna be weaving in the back as well. You are so gosh darn correct. So you might be asking yourself already, Rory, is this gonna be as pretty in the front as it is in the back? Oh, <laughs> you bet your caboose it is. In the gambling world, that would be a sure bet. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Now, once we come back around this way, it's going to be business as usual as far as weaves are concerned. We're just going to ignore this double coin knot altogether. In fact, what we're going to do is actually tighten it a little bit. The only reason we didn't tighten it is because we were waiting to weave these ones through it. So all we have to do is now tighten it. Get it to a pressure that is comfortable for the model. It still allows you, you don't really want to be pulling from the sides down. You really want to be tightening these outside areas. So for this red one here, instead of uh, pulling tight this way to uh, bring this side down to gain some tightness, we're really just going to pull from this side. I want to create the tightness here along these curves because I don't want to tighten on the sides of the neck. Once we've tightened those down, you're going to pull down from around get that tightness there, bring that around, and tighten those ones as well. This is the area where we're going to get a lot of the tightness from. Murray, how's that pressure on you? All right, so business as usual. We're just going to ignore this double coin knot altogether and we'll begin our weaving. It's hard to see where our neighbor rope is right now, but if you come back to this area where they first cross over, this red one is uh, going underneath this one, which means this one is going to be going over. So I'll be going under and over on this. Huzzah! Easy peasy poo. Do the same thing over here. Just follow the rules of weaving and everything will be a-okay. Continue the weave, both front and back. Once you come back around this way, add a little bit of tightness to your partner's comfort levels, and we shall uh, continue the weaving. Look at us. Look at us. Weaving the night away. See, it's even pleasing in the back, too. So just continue doing that. Hark, do you hear that? It's the pattern alert! It's like there's a really apparent pattern forming already. <laughs> So essentially, I'm gonna keep doing this pattern until I get to the ends of my rope, at which point I will contact you guys and let you know where to go from there. Now, I was able to get one or two more of these in before uh, I last left you guys, and I have maybe from the axillary space, two and a half, three feet of rope, which is essentially not enough to continue another revolution with the weave. So I will finish the weave off with this amount right here. And uh, one of the cool things that you can do from here on out is adjustments. So once you've had your last revolution in the front, you're gonna go maybe tie it off an easy square knot in the back. Try and make the ropes as even as possible. One of the things you can do right now is also adjust the tightness. So if your model just doesn't feel like it's tight enough, you can begin uh, that process. So if we take this rope right here, maybe even this one, nudge that, pulling it from this side and this side at the same time allows you to negotiate 
that tightness. And so as you can see, we can get more and more out of it and bring it down. Do the same thing with the other side to get the desired tightness that your model wants or that you think creates a more uh, aesthetic flow that you're looking for. And after you do that, then you can make adjustments. Try not to adjust, tighten, adjust, tighten. It just becomes annoying and tawdry for the model. Less fun. But once you have something you like, awesome. Let's go to the back and tie it off. Now, because I had so much extra rope, but not enough to do a full revolution in the front and in the back again, what we can do is create an extra little weave in this part, which may actually, now that I think about it, uh, cement down this area a little bit. So you know, what you're gonna do is take your rope, Continue the weaving pattern, of course. So once you go up and around, you just basically revolve around and go back down the other way. <laughs> I added all that extra tightness and I can definitely feel it. Now that has negotiated the extra rope I have to about a foot and a half now if I want to. Um, let me get the other one on and I can show you what you can do from there. Put a little double coin knot, a little bit of an overhand knot just to end it up right there. And it looks great. Look at you, fit for battle. And really, if you wanted to add more ropes to it, you could actually tie off these ends and uh, put two more ropes onto it with the same colors, maybe different colors, maybe alternating colors. So you can put the rose gold on this one and the red on this one, and then continue from there on out. You can undo all of this and just continue going. If you want to make it more than a gorget, have it go down the chest, you certainly can do that. You have the ability to with this. To a certain extent, there's a point where uh, it won't go that far. Or, uh, you know, if you have a lot more mass than Marie does, that might be another viable option to get enough coverage, is to add more ropes to these two, which becomes a four rope endeavor. But really, what's wrong than having more ropes on you? It feels great. Get that deep pressure stimulation. So this next one has uh, way less of pressure that can be applied to the neck. The first part a little bit sort of does, but for the most part, there's no connectivity to the neck, so there's nothing to lock off. So if you didn't like that lock off that was happening here and just wanted the pattern in the front, this is the one that's gonna be for you. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bite of our rope, we're going to reach into it, we're going to wrap around the other ropes, and then pull through. Ah. Let's do that again. It's super easy. It's like one of the best things any people who are trying to learn ropes can do. Put your fingies through, reach around, you will then kind of create this shape. It does create a loop. That's a girth hitch. Ah, or a lark's head for a lot of people. I've been calling it a girth hitch for way too long to start calling it a lark's head again. Now we're going to want this latching part in the back. So we'll position that into the back. So we'll go over kind of like a toga. You can have your uh, model raise their arm. Marie is way less of a helping partner. So that's creating that first part of this design that you will immediately notice when we start it again. Let me show you what's going on in the back. What's very important for this beginning is direction. Instead of creating the counter tension going up this way, we're actually gonna go down below. It's not gonna make a lot of sense right off the bat, but I assure you, it will make sense. So we've come from here. We're gonna go around this way and up and over. That is going to create the X in the front of it. As long as you're not pulling too tight, it's not going to be uncomfortable. What we're going to be doing down here, we'll be locking down what's going on in the front here. Not with this first part of the weave, but the second part of it. We'll lock it down so that this can no longer tighten in the front. and has no chance of cinching or becoming uncomfortable. What we're going to do is suppress this and open this up. So we're going to push this one down and go this way. We're gonna create that counter tension. I lost a little bit of tightness, so I'm gonna give it some this way, pull it down, and go back around. We're gonna follow this rope towards the front, and in following it to the front, we're gonna create the initial part of the weave. So since it went under last time, this one is going over. Fancy. Now, this next part is going to lock it down in the back and start creating the pattern we're gonna be doing in the back, which is also awesome. It's very much a braid. Now, coming back down this way, what I'm going to do is loosen it a little bit, since this way is actually this right here. Loosening it is very easy. Now I need to make a point of what's happening here, so I'm going to zoom in. Now in order to create the tension, the friction we need to lock this down, something needs to happen. 
There's only really one way to do it. We're going to go underneath these two ropes that I'm showing with my fingers and pushing this one down. As you can see, we're creating a lot of friction that way. If you do it the other way, push these down, lift this one up, nothing happens. So let's do that, which means we're going to go underneath this one. We're going to be pushing this one down. So we're going to go underneath these two, which is going to seem wrong at first because there's a double underneath right here, which looks wrong as far as weaving is concerned, but it won't be. This is the only time it does that right up here. So we're pushing this one down underneath, and now we're going this way, creating that counter tension. Now though up here, we'll continue the weave. Follow our partner, under, over, so over, under. Awesome, the weaving pattern is starting to happen. The only place that there's gonna be pressure on the neck is a little bit right off here, until we lock it down, which we have. As you can see, this goes out this way. It goes out. It doesn't compress inwards. It goes out and then wraps around. So there is no real frontal pressure on the neck other than right here for a little bit after these first two weaves. Once we lock it down, you can loosen it up and it will stay that way. Let's get to the back because the back is the hardest part of this whole process. So how do we continue this weave? Well, basically, you're taking the two bottom ones. You're going to loosen up a little bit, which is technically right here. Now, what needs to happen is we need to push this one down. We're going to go underneath these two and push this one down to create that tension. So, over, under, over. Simple. In order to push that down, we got to go underneath that one. We can then tighten. Come from here, pull over the shoulder, tighten down, cross tension. I'm gonna create that weave in the front and I'm gonna come back right around for you. The weave in the front is going to be the easiest part. This is the hardest part of this one. All right then, we came over this shoulder. We gotta take the two bottom ones, loosen it up a little bit. The one that loosens will be the one that we always go underneath. So we're gonna go underneath this one because that's the one that loosened, as you can see there. And then we're gonna push this one down. So we're gonna go under, over, under. We can still keep with the weave in the back and then braid it. Once we went under that, we have to go over this one. Cool, let's tighten. Tighten from here, pull down this way. Awesome, that's done. Cross tension. Now I have about a foot and a half of rope. It's maybe enough to get to the top of the shoulder, but that means that the knottage is gonna be showing in the weave in the front. To me, that isn't very aesthetically pleasing as far as the person who was, uh, you know, creating uh, this rig. So what I'm going to do is actually tie off this rope earlier because I only have about yay much left. So I'm going to create cross tension and go this way. I don't want to interrupt the aesthetic portion of the braid either. So I'm going to create an overhand knot right here. Go over the hand, you create a loop, go through the loop. Awesome. Now we got this right there. I can, I can pull it over a little bit right over here. I'm not going to. I'm going to keep it right there. Grab the bite of my second rope. Do the same trick we did earlier to create the girth hitch. Awesome. We're gonna wrap that just before this square knot. Cool, that's tightened, ain't going nowhere. Let's continue on. I'm gonna create that weave in the front, which I don't need to show you. It's mostly this braid in the back that I need to show you. I mean, I will eventually show you the weave. <laughs> just not right now. So like before, you're gonna take the two bottom parts. You're gonna loosen it a little bit. Now the part that loosens, you're going to be going underneath because you're going to suppress this one. So over, under, over, under. You'll be able to see that because this one looks like it's being raised and this one is depressed. What do we do to our depressed friends? We raise them up and then we ground our other friends. I'm going to ground that one. I'm going to go beneath this one as well. Over this one because we need to. And then below here, we're going to then tighten up just like we were doing before. Tighten that, create that cross tension, let's go. Now I'm gonna keep going with this. I'm basically gonna be doing the same thing until I get to the end of this rope. And then I'll tell you what we did, I'll show you the front, I'll show you the ending back. Whoa, hey, and there we have the front, a beautiful weaving gorget. I enjoy them so much. They're fun and easy to do on people and people love them too. I've done them many a time on folk and they just gobble it up. And rightly so, it is fantastic. Now, I still have the end of my rope on the back here, but you can see the, uh, the braiding pattern that comes down. It's actually very elegant and I'm really happy with it. When I last left you guys, there was a mistake 
in my previous one that I had to go back just a little bit to uh, fix as kind of additional homework for you to go back uh, to the last time I, uh, we were at the back and see if you can see where the mistake was. It's always important to learn from these mistakes. It was something very simple and can be overlooked, but now looking at the braiding pattern, it was quite obvious at the time, and I don't know how I didn't see it. So now that I've gone through the braiding pattern, I would normally create that cross tension here, which I will continue to do, but instead I'm going to go over this one and around, and just end that right there. And I can take what I have right here, overhand knot, close that off. Can I do something fancy with it? Probably. Double coin knot heart knot, Celtic knot, but why make it overly difficult? You can create a bow. People love bows. This braid, wonderful. I feel like the back is almost prettier than what the front is. Well, hey, I hope you had a wonderful time learning from those tutorials as we did teaching them to you. Marie has decided that she is a French revolutionist, hearing the word of God and changing the world. That she is, so naturally she's atheistic, but you know, she lies all the time, so what's gonna stop her from lying to all of the French people? That's France's problem now, not mine. And I would be remiss if I did not bring up my other lovely sponsors for today, the wonderful people over at Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash Roar's Brainworks, just like this YouTube channel. They are my rope vanguard, my colonizers of dreams. And without them, these ropey endeavors would be <laughs> way harder to accomplish. Thank you for spending your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and comment down below what kind of rope bondage things you would like me to teach you. As always, I'm Rory. This is our brain. I'm fairly certain it works. Be safe and go create some art.